Hey guys, it's Matt. Welcome to Speed Tutor, and today we're going to be looking at creating a fading health system like you would see in popular FPS titles like Call of Duty Battlefield, when you take damage from either a bullet or a bomb, or in, say, Call of Duty Warzone, the gas, you actually take damage. There's a sort of highlight around the screen to show that you've been hurt, and then over time, as your damage gets more, there'll be sort of marks around the screen of sort of blood splatters and things which will appear gradually, and then after a certain amount of time, that will actually disappear or slightly fade away and we're going to look at doing that today. So if everybody watches this video could give the video a like it would really really help me out so thank you so so much. So in the tutorial I'm going to show you how to walk into an object, you can create an explosion, cause damage, to your health, you can see that the original you get some sound effects, some of the things fading across the screen to show that we've hurt, we've got an attack reaction, we've got some shaking and then over a set period of time you will see that the health will actually fade away over time and we'll be back to full health. And before we get started you need to remember all I've got in my UI is I've got a red splatter here which is just something from Photoshop with a transparent background which has got a splatter sort of blood effect and then I've also got a radial effect which is just a radial gradient which is transparent in the middle. So okay, first of all we want to right click, choose UI and choose canvas. And we'll call this canvas health canvas. Once we've done that we can right click on the canvas, choose UI and we're just going to choose image. We're going to go to 2D view, press F, we'll apply the red splatter effect but I want that to apply to the entirety of the screen. So we'll just click on the anchor points, I'll hold Alt and then click in the bottom right and you can see that it actually encapsulates the entirety of our screen now all the way to the edges. We could have dragged it out but we'll just do it like this. And I'm going to call this Red Health Splatter. Then what we're going to do is I'll just duplicate that and I'm just going to add the white radial blood effect which is also that effect that will just appear in for a split second just to show that we've been damaged. So I'll just call this radial blood hurt just so we know and I'm going to just change this to a red colour but maybe make it a little bit darker so it's not quite as in your face. So we're just going to by default have that as untick the image property so we don't see that. And then on our red blood splatter we want to take the click on the colour and take the alpha all the way down to zero. And if you want to get hold of all the assets and this project you can find it on Patreon and I'll leave a link in the description for you to check that out. Then now we've got all that set up we are going to want to create a script to control our health so right click create C sharp and we'll just call this health controller. We're going to open up health controller individual studio and from here what we're going to do is we're going to create a public float and we're just going to call this current player health set that equal to 100.0 F. So this is going to be our current health that player will have out of 100. We'll have serialized field private because this current health is something that we're going to affect when we actually take damage. So that's why it's public because we're going to access it for another script. We'll have private float and then we'll call this max player health. We'll also set that to 100 0 F because that's the maximum that health can ever be. I'm just going to put headers at the top of my variables just to make it look neater and easy to see in the inspector, you can do that too. And we're going to have one below here which is serialized field again, private image and we're just going to call this the red splatter image, set that equal to null because that's the image that's just going to change as we take damage but at the top we need to use a namespace of using unity engine.ui so we can access the image component. Then we're going to need another variable which is going to be our actual private image and our hurt image or the thing, the image that's going to flash up during when we get hurt. So we'll just set that equal to null. And we're going to have another serialized field, private float, and have that as hurt timer because we're going to choose the amount of time that we want to flash that up in the middle of the screen to show that we've been damaged. And then we're going to also have things for making the health regenerate but we'll do that as time goes along. But of course we wanted to create an audio effect for when this all happened too. So you can in, in the box here we can write serialized field in square brackets say private audio clip and we're just going to call this our hurt audio set that equal to null and have a private audio source and just give that a name of health audio source because this can go on our object here. 
we'll have a start method, which is going to reference our audio source that we want. So we'll say that health audio source equals get component in angled brackets. We want to look for the actual audio source, which will be on this object here, because we'll just add it here. So it makes it nice and easy. Then we want a method to actually update the health or when we choose to update the UI that we have. So what we want to do is we want to call this just void update health, two curly brackets below. And we want to create a local variable to change the alpha value of the splatter image that we have. So we want to set this as color, which is just the color or accessing the color component of an image. We're just going to call this as a shorthand for, we'll just say the splatter alpha, set that equal to our red splatter image dot color. Then we're saying that the splatter alpha dot a, which is the alpha component of it, will set that equal to one. And then we'll set that equal to minus the current player health divided by the max player health. Remember in unity alpha is something that goes from naught to one. And so let's give an example. Let's say we take 10 damage and our current health is equal to 90. We divide that by a hundred, we get equals 0.9 and 0.9 is, is good, but that's too much health. So that our alpha will be equal to 0.9, which was almost to the maximum of one. So we need to actually then do one minus 0.9, which would then equal 0.1, which is actually 10% of the actual damage that we took. So that makes it an accurate value. Then we can then say that the red splatter image dot color is equal to the splatter alpha with a semicolon. So now we're just setting the red splatter image to whatever we've just set the health to based on the current health divided by the current health and then taking that away from the value of one to get a very small value. We need another method which we'll call this public void for take damage. So this is going to be something that we write that we'll call this method that when we actually do damage to our player, what do we want to happen? So we'll say that if our current health is ever greater than or equal to zero, then we're not actually dead. We're still alive. So we can take damage. We're going to have something that talks about, can we regenerate our health? We're going to cause that hurt effect to happen. We're going to update the health like we just did above. So we'll call that method update health with two brackets and a semicolon. And then we're going to do some cooldowns when that time comes, because we don't want to be able to regenerate the health straight away. We want to wait a period of time before that happens. Now we want to focus on the hurt effect that we want to create. Now we want to say I enumerator hurt flash with two brackets, then two curly brackets below. And we'll say that our hurt image dot enabled is equal to true at this point that when we call this method that will happen we'll say that the health audio source dot play one shot is we can play the hurt audio and we'll add up a semicolon we'll write a yield command to wait a certain amount of time so we'll say wait return new wait for seconds and then in brackets we're going to write the hurt timer that we specified at the top and then we'll say that the hurt image dot enabled is equal to false. So now whenever we call this, we're going to show that hurt effect, play the sound, but only for a very split second will we show this image and play one shot just plays once anyway, so it doesn't matter. And then we'll turn it off straight away. So it's just a, an indication that that happens. So in our other method down here for taking damage, we can change this now. So we can say start core routine, open brackets, hurt flash and we can put two brackets then a bracket to encapsulate at the end semicolon and we have something working at the very moment now in our game what we can do is we can create ourselves an empty game object which will be a health controller we can add our health controller script over here we can say that our current health is 100 max health is 100 we need our red splatter image we can put into here we need our hurt image which can go into there we'll set our 0.1 as the hurt timer, it'll flash up for 0.1 seconds. I've got some sounds here, which is just going to be my male hurt sound effect. And you need to make sure that you've got an audio source and make sure it's on tick on play on awake when you've got it on this object. So now, like I said, we need to be able to cause damage to our player. So we've got ourselves a mine here, which is going to be the thing that we're going to step on. So we'll go create. 
C sharp and we'll just call this damage controller. We'll open up in Visual Studio and we'll write a square bracket serialize field and we'll just declare this as private. We'll say that it's a flow and we'll call this bomb damage. Set that equal to 10.0F so we're good. 10 damage when we walk into a mine. Then in my case, you don't have to do this bit, but I'm just gonna have another private game object which will be my explosive particle that I'm going to use. Set that equal to null because that's what I want to appear when I walk into it. Then we'll have another serialized field below. Set that equal to private. Then we're going to call the reference the health controller we'll, and we'll just put a semicolon and chew and set this to a name of health controller. Also set that equal to null. Then we're going to like before have some sound effects so that we'll say serialized field private audio clip is the bomb audio set that equal to null under here we'll have a private bool which is audio playing because we want to see if the audio is still playing we'll do something else then we'll have a private just like before audio source and we'll call this bomb audio source with a semicolon now under here we'll say void start and we'll reference like before when we did it in the health controller we'll just say that bomb audio source is equal to get to component audio source because it'll be on this object. We want to create a little on trigger events. We'll say void on trigger enter and then it'll have fill in collider other if you press tab. Then we'll say that if other dot compare tag is in quotes player, then we'll say that our explosive particle dot set active is true in this case. We'll say that the bomb audio source dot play one shot in brackets bomb audio because that's when we want to play that when we walk into it we'll say that underscore health controller so that was our health control that we have we'll say that the current player health minus equals the bomb damage so we're just going to take away the bomb damage from the current player health then we'll say that the health controller dot take damage was that method that we wanted to happen when when we take damage from the bomb then what you might want to do is maybe turn the game object off of this mine whenever we want. So we'll say game object dot get component. You can either set active or in this case, I'm just going to set the box collider dot enabled equals false. So then we can not actually interact with it again. And we'll say that playing audio is equal to true when this is happening. Then we'll create a little private update. And then we'll say that if our playing audio is true, in brackets, we'll say that if bomb audio source dot is playing is false. So if it's stopped playing audio after we've actually said it should be, we'll actually just turn the game object and set it to false. If you had audio on a different object or you had an audio controller where it had it somewhere better than this, then you don't need these, this line or this line. You can just have the set active false straight away and you don't need to wait any time for it to finish off the audio effect. This is just me showing you an example of how it could be done. Now if we go back into Unity, I go and select the mine that we've got. Make sure that your mine object has a box collider. It's set to his trigger. It has an audio source which is not playing awake and we can add our damage controller script to it. You can see that it's looking for a damage particle and I've already got that parented to my object. It does 10 damage. The health control that it's looking for is the health control here. An audio clip is just the large explosion that I've got here. So you can press save. You want to make sure that your player or something that's gonna run into the object has a tag of player. Then what we can do as an example is we can just duplicate a few more mines just so that we can show this happening. So if we press play and you can see, I will walk into the object and we will get the effect around the screen and you will see that it built up the damage around. So that's all well and good if you didn't want the health to then regenerate. So say you want the health to regenerate, we'll have to go back into our health controller and we're going to create some new variables. So at the top where we talk about player health, we're just gonna write serialize field private integer and we'll call this regenerate set that equal to one then we're going to have a private bool can regen and set that equal to false and then underneath our hurt image what we'll have is some timers to control when we should be able to heal so we'll have a serialized field private float heal cooldown set that equal to say three seconds have another square bracket serialized field private 
max heal cooldown set that equal to three seconds because that's going to be need to be reset whenever we do we need to make sure that that's set to a float and then we also want a private bull start cooldown is equal to false so now below here below our last method we want to write void update because we want to check when something should happen so we want to check that if start cooldown is true then we want to say that our heal cooldown so the timer that we want to count down when we should be able to heal is minus equals time dot delta time which will count down a number of seconds then under that statement we can say that if heal cooldown at any point is less than or equal to zero then we'll have two curly brackets below and we'll say that can regen is equal to true because we should be able to regenerate and start cooldown is then equal to false because we finished now so this shouldn't count down anymore so we're doing the boolean check so we can't do the countdown anymore when it's hit zero so then underneath this statement that will say that if we can regen at any point so if that cooldown has finished we should say that if current player health is less than or equal to our maximum player health and we'll just say minus 0.01 because this just means that it's just before it reaches a hundred it allows us to just make sure that it's more accurate current player health plus equals time dot delta time times by our regen rate which would be how quickly our health will regenerate then we also want to call update health because we want to update that when we want it to happen so it will update the alpha that we've got in any other case we want an else statement and we want to say that current health is equal to the max player health because it would be full if it wasn't less than the max it's going to be the max so we just want to set the current health equal to the max player health which will be 100 then we'll say that the heal cooldown is equal to the max heal cooldown because we should be able to cool it down again and regenerate is equal to false because we don't want to regenerate because we're at the maximum so we can just stop that so we're not doing any taxing things then when we take damage we don't want to regenerate instantly so we just want to make sure that we set can regen equal to false whenever we take damage so it's make sure that we don't have any problems further down the line we want to make sure that we actually make sure that the heal cooldown at any point is equal to the max just before we set anything just so we don't run into any problems further down the line a, a bug or something that didn't cool down for some reason and then we can say that the start cooldown is then equal to true and it starts this cycle of the update checking is start cooldown true is it true is it true is it true and then we set it to true and it goes is i'll do this if it's then equal to zero we'll we'll stop doing that and we'll do this one down here and then we'll set the health back to our normal amount by counting up and then if it ever reaches our maximum we'll set them all and turn that off so it only really does anything when we take the damage so now if we go to our health controller we can see it's out of 100 i'm going to set my regenerate to 30 because it's going to regenerate our health really fast but our cooldown is three. If I take off maximize on play and I just press play here and you, if you watch on the right hand side, if you can see the inspector will walk into an object, it'll start counting down initially. And then when it's done, it will put our health back. If I run into these two really fast, I've got a bit of damage. You can see at the top, it will count back up really, really quickly. Um, I did use a camera shake effect which uses is used on that particle so that when I run into the particle it appears and it will do a camera shake we've looked at adding sound effects and so many things like that if you want to get this entire project or the separate script on my patreon you can take a look come and join me on discord if you want to chat and be sure to check out my great assets on the unity store so if you do like this tutorial let me know what you think let me know of any other ideas and hopefully this helped you out if you've got any problems at all comment down below so thanks very much for watching and don't forget to like comment and subscribe cheers